Ukraine today is joined by the former mayor of Warsaw, former Polish Minister of Foreign Economic Cooperation and a current head of Polish Working Group on Local Self-Governance in Ukraine, Mr. Marcin Svinsicki. Mr. Svinsicki, welcome to Ukraine today. Welcome, it's my pleasure to talk with you. Mr. Svinsicki, we've been talking to various experts on uh, decentralization reform in Ukraine and uh, we've been hearing various messages, various things about decentralization. In your opinion, how well is this reform going in Ukraine? Uh, I think that the reform is going in the right direction, although it's going uh, slowly, I would say. Uh, the main obstacle was the constitution, the old constitution, and right now we are in the process of changing the chapter on local self-government in constitution. Uh, so I hope that with the finalizing, with the, with the final of the work on constitutional uh, chapter, we can uh, speed up the work on the local uh, decentralization. There were a lot of controversies around the uh, changes to this constitution which are currently being suggested to be introduced. Uh, the, the changes have already been passed by the parliament in the first reading, they have already been approved by the constitutional court and now we're expecting them to be approved by the parliament in the, in, uh, sometime in fall. Um, in your opinion, how good are these changes reflecting the, the, the reform which is intended to be introduced in Ukraine, how, 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 how effective these, these changes will be for, for implementation of this decentralization reform. Yes, I believe that these changes in, in principle, they open the way to the right uh, decentralization and, and, and fully fledged decentralization of the, of the country's administration. Uh, they, they provide for the autonomous competences of uh, all levels of uh, uh, territorial self-government, they provide for uh, financial independence of uh, all the levels of the regional uh, self-government and also they, they provide for their own property. Uh, there is also a principle of subsidiarity written down in the constitution which means that the uh, public matters are solved at the lowest possible level where they can be solved effectively. Mm, and also the supervision over uh, local administration of the, of, is uh, uh, only from the point of view of compliance with the law. So local authorities will be free uh, to have their own policy. And the only thing is that they must keep within the uh, principles of law. Now when, assuming that, ho let's hope that the changes to the constitution will be adopted in fall, how quickly these laws you were working on can be adopted? Yes, I, I hope that they can be adopted uh, quickly. Mm, but there is still uh, a lot of work to be done. Uh, the separation of competences, for example, it requires review of more or less of 100 different specific laws on, on schools, on roads, on planning, on environment, on everything, and to separation of the public activities of the public authorities in all these laws, uh, allocation of them between one le first level, second level, or third level of self-government, or they are staying within the competences of the central government. So this is a very, uh, I would say, responsible and, and, and hard work to, to prepare this. Well, basically... For example, just to separate mm -hmm. competence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, basically what I was trying to, 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 to get from you was how much time Ukraine needs to, to, to complete this reform once the, the changes of the constitution, which is the crucial step, I understand, are adopted. How much... Uh, what is the, the best case scenario and the worst case scenario? The best uh, case scenario is that you can make it in, in, in a half a year uh, if you have a, a good team of people and somebody who is just responsible only for local government reform. Uh, uh, because what, what is uh, the difference, what I noticed between the, the, the reform of self-government here and in Poland, that in Poland we had a one a top expert, not politician, but expert, who was responsible 24 hours uh, per day uh, uh, for working on decentralization reform. So he was preparing all the legislation for the government, uh, he was negotiating with ministries, uh, he was um, drafting the law, he had uh, his representatives in the regions uh, in time of uh, implementation. Uh, so this uh, made the work very fast. In Ukraine we are, we are talking, that there are just, there's a lot of good experts in Ukraine, knowledgeable about self-government, also um, prepared to do this work. 
but somehow they cannot take the decisions, you know, and this is sometimes waiting before the decision is taken, before the law is adopted. So I, I believe that the organization of the work is very important here to make it fast. Can we talk a little bit about the position of the prefect? Can you explain a little bit uh, to our viewers what this prefect will be doing in Ukraine? I understand this is one of these obstacles, these, these laws which could not be adopted prior to the changes to the constitution. So now when the changes will be introduced, the law can be adopted. So what this person will be doing? Yes, the prefect, uh, first of all, there is still some parts of the public administration that stay with the government. For example, like na national roads or national inspections, uh, national public order, uh, to a certain extent or, or, or entirely, these things stay with the responsibility of uh, public administration and public administration needs to have its representatives uh, in the uh, territorial uh, units. So this is the first uh, task of the, of the prefect. The second task is uh, uh, supervision over the local self government but only from the point of view of legality. For example, local self government might have a old school building, not necessary anymore. So local self government can do anything with this building, can, can, can sold it, can sell it, they can rent it, can, can change its function. The supervision role is only to see whether they are doing to according to the principle of uh, public procurement, of public tenders, only the principles must be, must be secured. Uh, this is the very important, not to, not to uh, make his position stronger than it is necessary, not to make, them make him pos to possible to intervene in the everyday activities of the local authorities, in their planning, in their um, financial activities. Only legality is the point. So, so this is important to, to set this, mm, this uh, clear um, division of his competencies. Well, and I think this brings to my next question. Uh, based on the draft law which Ukraine is now preparing, do you see that this person, this prefect, will have this balance of competencies? Uh, is, is, there, is there a risk that he can be the one who will have all the power? Uh, yes, the, the, uh, we, we, we will discuss this. There is a new law on, 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 on prefect. So, uh, first of all, also is to give him some competences in coordination of these uh, uh, territorial uh, units of central government, because you can you can still govern from the ministries, or you can empower the prefect to have more uh, possibilities to coordinate. Uh, central government representation in the territory. First of all, to, to have some, some kind of the decentralization of these activities that still remain in the competences of the central government, but ma must be territorially eff more effectively, more coordinated and, and executed. Uh, secondly, uh, is his position vis-a-vis -vis self-government. He should not uh, uh, feel himself superior to them. He is not superior, he's not giving orders, he's not supervising their uh, inventions, their initiatives, their actions. He's only controlling them from the point of view of legality of their action. Mr. Sensinski, am I... And, and, mm -hmm. still, and still, local self government uh, has a right to appeal to the court, you know, whether the decision of the prefect are uh, correct in the view of the, of the law or he was wrong. Mr. Sensinski, my final question. Uh, based on your discussions with the Ukrainian government, um, obviously power is something which is very sweet and not a lot of people are willing to, to give away the power. Do you see the political will on the part of Ukrainian officials to, to go forward with this reform, to give away their power? Uh, in principle, yes, I see that there is a will, at, at, least, at least when I talk about it. Uh, uh, I would rather say that the problem is the way in which uh, the reform is uh, conducted and implemented. This might be improved, the management over reform. And to have uh, in Poland, you know, what worked was that there was one very competent, the best expert we had on the local government, he was responsible for the reform in front of the government. Prime Minister had a trust to him and, tr and, 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 and he prepare, was preparing all the draft legislation for the uh, government and for the parliament. Here, somehow, this responsibility is, is uh, spread over, over many people, over people that have many other responsibilities, many other tasks. Uh, they have occasionally time for the local self government. So experts are discussing, and there is no decision. So things are moving forward too slowly. So I think there is a will, 
but the way in which reform is uh, prepared and executed uh, could be improved. Yeah, it looks like Ukraine needs uh, some, some way to, to, to fasten this reform, to, to speed up this reform. Uh, Mr. Svensiski, many thanks for coming to us and talking to us. This was Volodymyr Sulhu for Ukraine Today, together with the former mayor of Warsaw, former Polish minister of foreign economic cooperation, and the current head of Polish coordination group on decentralization in Ukraine, Mr. Martin Svensiski. Thank you for watching us.